Okay, so this is group that's quantum mechanics, problem 5.28, and um, he gives us a couple of integrals to evaluate. Um, this is the integral for the total number of particles, and also for the total energy, and we're going to do it for the case of identical fermions at absolute zero, and then we'll compare our results with them results presented earlier in the book. I should have, uh, I think I, I will have copied all of these equations to the front of the video for you. Um, so the first one is equation 5.108 in the book. Um, so n is equal to volume divided by 2 pi squared integral from 0 to infinity So momentum h bar k, except this is squared, right, over 2m, so just kinetic energy, minus mu, our chemical potential, and this quantity is divided by kbt, right, kb, uh, right, the Boltzmann constant, not to be confused with this um, wave number k. And then uh, we are we're doing this for fermions, so we'll have a plus one down here. All right, so um, we're looking at the case of absolute zero. Um, and so if we, well, you know, you can see this and um, you could just kind of uh, see this in equation 5.104. But we'll just uh, go over it. So, right, we're dividing by zero up here in this exponent. Uh, so this will become uh, very large. All right. So I'm I'm just going to use epsilon is equal to the energy, right? Which is just uh, p squared over two m, or h bar k quantity squared over two m. All right. Um, so what's going to happen depends on the sign of this exponent, right? This will either blow up and make everything go to zero, or um, just this exponent part will go to zero, and we'll just be left with a k squared. So for an epsilon uh, greater than the chemical potential, um, this exponent here will blow up, and the the denominator here will go to zero, or um, excuse me, um, go to infinity, leading uh, to everything here going to zero. Okay. Um, so this gives us uh, this integral uh, going to zero. All right. Um, Basically, there are no uh, fermions, so at absolute zero, um, remember, we have a sharp cutoff at the chemical potential, all right? Um, I shouldn't have drawn that right there. But um, here we have the number density right, equal to 1, up to the chemical potential, then it drops off uh, completely. So just, we, we have the Fermi energy here, right? Okay, um, so for the energy is greater than the chemical potential out here, we don't have any uh, particles out there. All right, for um, the energies less than the chemical potential, um, now we have uh, this exponent. Um, it still blows up, except there's a minus sign, right? So uh, this this p 
piece down here, this exponent will go to zero rather than infinity. And we, d we don't have zero in our denominator, the, the denominator of our entire uh, integrand here because we have this one right here. So, um, uh, in this case, n is equal to v squared over 2 pi squared 0. Well, um, we'll deal with this in a second. All right, we just have a, a k squared, right? Over, it's a 0 plus 1. Okay, so just a k squared, dk. All right, and we're not going to have to integrate all the way out to infinity because... Um, once we cross this point here, again, there's no, no particles out here. So we'll just have um, a k. I'm going to put a subscript f on here to remind us that this is the, the, the k for, you know, located at this, uh, for this Fermi energy. So the Fermi energy would be h bar k sub f quantity squared over 2m. All right, so we're only going to have to integrate up to this. All right, so this integral is not difficult. V over 2 pi squared, right? And it's just, a, it's just a k squared. So we just get a k to the third power over 3. And it's evaluated from 0 to this uh, k sub f, which is the largest k at which there are still particles. All right, um, so let's just write this out. Um, we'll have a 6 pi squared on the bottom. On the top we're going to have this b and then we'll have a k sub f and that's cubed. All right, so um, let's just uh, Look real quick at the um, equation we are going to compare this with. Compare the result to equation 5.43. So we can go back to that. So equation. Uh, oh wait. We'll just compare this at the end. Okay. Um, he has it in terms of energy, and our next integral is in uh, over the energy anyway. So um, our next one. Okay, this integral that we'll be doing is energy, right? V over two pi squared h bar squared over 2m integral from 0 to infinity this time we have a k to the fourth power and then we have our big uh, writing all of this out h bar k quantity squared over 2m right, that's our epsilon or that's our, our kinetic energy minus mu our chemical potential divided by kbt and then again a plus one for fermions okay and the same story applies as before so um, when uh, when we're above the chemical potential when our, our energies when we're, the energy we're looking at is above the chemical potential um, at very low temperatures, right? Uh, this will explode um, down here, and um, and then uh, this integral will go up to zero. The integrand will go up to zero. All right, so we won't even worry about that case. Um, but on the other hand, when uh, we're looking at energies below this chemical potential, then uh, this the exponent up here still, uh, rather, 
then going to plus infinity, it'll go to minus infinity, and uh, and uh, this will go to zero. All right, so I'm just going to. here all right so again for energies less than the chemical potential we'll have e equals v over 2 pi squared h bar squared over 2m and then we're just going to be integrating from 0 up to um, this k for the at, at the Fermi surface right um, and there will just be a k to the fourth power and then a zero plus one on the bottom so let's run through this real quick another nice easy integral to do I'm just going to combine these maybe we'll split them back up apart later I don't know so at 4 pi, or 4m pi squared, we have an h bar squared on the top, and then we'll have a k sub f to the fifth power divided by 5. So on the bottom we'll have a 20m pi squared. Okay, so um, now we're going to uh, try going back to these other equations, uh, 5.43 and 5.45. All right, and then he, he does make a note. Um, so for electrons, there's an extra factor of two in uh, these integrals that we just did uh, to account for the spin degeneracy. So we expect these equations that we came up with, or that we integrated, right, for, for uh, t equals zero, they should agree with the, um, the previous equations up to a factor of two. So let me go back and find these again. All right, so let, I'll just write them out real quick. So, This is equation 5.43. Okay. And equation 5.45. I'll just break. Squared, 3 pi squared, big N, Q, 5 thirds, B to the minus 2 thirds, okay, and then divided by 10 pi squared M. All right. So, um, let's just look these over real quick. Um, so, if we were to um, just try and uh, put these in. So um, let's look at this first one up here, and we want it in terms of this uh, Fermi energy, right? Okay. Um, let's grab a different marker real quick. This one's getting a little dry. All right. All right, so let's first uh, just look at this. Um, this means. So this would be uh, p squared over 2m 
except uh, P we're just put in terms of H bar K, and it's, it's our Fermi K, right? And then this row is just the particle density, so n over v by squared two thirds. All right. So again, this is uh, from this equation 5.43 that I'm looking at. All right. Um, so the equation we're what well, we're comparing this to is uh, this one up here. So we want to just basically solve this for n and compare with that up there. All right, so these, I'm going to cross this part out so we can just look at this as an equation here. So the two m's can go away. Um, I'm going to also get rid of these h bar squared. All right, um, let's see. I can take the square root of both sides here. And then I'm going to take the cube of both sides. So I'll put this 3 over on this side and get rid of that one. All right, so what we have now is k sub f to the third power is equal to 3n over v pi squared. All right, so now we just solve for n. n is equal to, uh, we'll bring the v up on the other side k sub f to the third power for 3 pi squared. Okay, so um, what we notice is that uh, this includes the spin degeneracy. All right, so this is actually two times uh, the answer what we got before. But aside from the factor of 2, just like uh, Griffiths warned us about, we these two equations agree here and here. Okay, so looking at the other one now, let's see what we get. Uh, so now what we're comparing is this equation up here with this one down here. And you know what I just looked at? Uh, uh, 5.45 again, and Griffiths already did this, so let's not even worry about it, because if we look at, uh, before this final result, he gives us uh, this same answer in terms of, okay, so we have an h bar squared, we have a k sub f to the fifth, we have a v then we have a 10 pi squared m. All right. Okay. So again, uh, this and this agree perfectly up to a factor of 2. So here's our case of f to the fifth power, h bar squared, v, m, pi squared. And then, again, this one is two times as large um, because we took into account the spin degeneracy in this case, but not in this case. All right. So... Uh, that's it for this problem.